So, when one studies information structures one has to keep contending oneself with the issue of what is the is the with the issue of information. So, we have to ask ourselves what what with what information is a certain action being taken. So, a, a way to state this formally uh, is, is to say that there is a measurable function that maps the information random variables to the action random variables. Right. So, this is this is a concept in mathematics we have, uh, which uh, needs a course in analysis. So, we I am not going to go deeper into that. However, I will just appeal to some to an intuition intuitive understanding of what it means for uh, for the information of a certain random variable to be available uh, while choosing a while choosing a certain action. So, if uh, all of what I am saying today can be made formal by uh, by using uh, using concepts of measure theory and uh, sigma algebras and so on, but I, I would not be uh, going into that in, in this course. So, it is for us for, for our purpose it is enough to uh, enough to, uh, to sort of uh, understand logically how, inf how the information of a certain random variable can be made useful. Okay. So, we will use the notation that z is a we if when we want to say that z is a function of say a variable w we will say that z belongs to sigma of w this is the this is actually the notation borrowed form analysis it essentially says that z is a measurable function of w or z is adapted to the sigma algebra generated by w or simply in our in a sim, in our simple language it it just means that z z is produced from the information of w right okay now let us let's look at some variations uh, variations of the witzenhausen problem we have x0 as the initial state you have observation y0 equal to x0, you have an action u1 that is chosen, action of first controller and you have x1 which, which comes up uh, out of this. So, x0 plus u1 right. So, uh, remember since x and u1 is chosen as a function of uh, of x0 so using our notation i will write u1 belongs to sigma of x0 right okay the uh, the the uh, the observation of the second controller is so u2 is chosen as a function of y1 so u2 then in our notation belongs to sigma of y1 right and then thanks to u2 your your state changes to x2 which is x1 minus u2 and that is that is the, the, the resulting state and the cost that we want to do uh, that we want to minimize is minim we want to minimize over u1 with information of x0 uh, sorry and u2 with the information of y1 we want to minimize the expectation of k square u1 square plus x1 minus u2 the whole square okay this is the this is here the uh, the this is witzenhausen's problem Okay. So, now let us look at variations of this. So, variant 1 right. So, here in, in variant 1 we will we will consider the case of full noise observation, full noise observation. So, what does this mean? What this means is u0 uh, u1 is still a function of x0. So, u1 is a function of x0, but uh, when you are choosing u2, u2 has access to both x0 uh, and the noise. 
So, it is a function of this comma v right. So, u 2 is a function of uh, of x 0 and v. But the cost is still the same we are using the we are keeping the same cost, but we have changed the information structure ok and the same the same cost as above. And this is a new information pattern. All right. So now, uh, what is this? Uh, so now let's let's recall. Uh, let's let's argue through what uh, what we can see here. See, u two has access to x zero and v. So from if since it knows x zero and v, since it knows x zero and v. From there it can go back and construct see it knows x0 and v from, from since it knows x0 it can also reconstruct u1 remember because u1 is a function of x0 itself. So, it can reconstruct u1 and therefore it can reconstruct x1 right. So, so the knowledge of so knowledge of of x 0 implies knowledge of x 1. So, it can reconstruct x 1 and now because it can reconstruct x 1 and it knows uh, it, it actually knows uh, it actually knows v itself right. So, it can uh, it can basically from uh, because it knows v it can also reconstruct x 1 x 1 plus v because it knows v also right. So, so as a result of this u u 2 which is which is this u 2 has which has the information of uh, x 0 and v this also has uh, this implies that u 2 also knows x 1 and x 1 plus v right. So, in as a result of that it actually knows uh, it actually knows the the uh, uh, it, it yeah. So, it knows x so as a result u 2 knows x 1 and x 1 plus v. So, then our problem becomes we are minimizing the expectation of k square u 0 square plus uh, u, u 1 square plus uh, plus x 1 minus u 2 the whole square where now u 0 will is a function of x 0 and u 1 is a function of x 0 comma v, but knowing x 0 comma v from there it can reconstruct remember x 1 itself. So, what so then what should be the optimal thing uh, for for this uh, for this uh, for this team of players to do? Well, what the what uh, the the remember the second control the, the second controller's action is is its purpose is to simply come as close to x 1 as possible, but but it it actually knows x 1, but from the information that it already has it can in fact reconstruct x 1. So, as a result the second controller second controller would be able would be able to reconstruct x 1 and therefore, make this estimation error here 0. So, then the, the job of the first controller then is rather simple it just has to uh, it just has to look at this particular cost and decide well what should its action be to minimize that. So, then the, the obvious choice there is to simply minimize 0. Right. So, uh, minim uh, is to set this action to be 0. So, as a consequence we find here is the optimal policy. So, you can choose sorry I. So, here u 1 is a function of x 0 u 2 is a function of so the view of minimizing this cost with the constraint that u 1 is a function of x 0 
and u2 is a function of x0 comma v. But remember we have seen that once x0 and v are known from there u2 can also know x, x1 and x1 plus v uh, as well right. So, because x now because u2 knows x1 the this term which is where u2 appears can be made 0 because u2 can output x1 itself it is what it is it, it wants to be as close to x1 as possible it can output x1 and and this term can be made 0. Now, since this term can be made 0 regardless of what the uh, regardless of what the first controller does the first controller then has a very simple task he has to simply make this term 0. So, what so the optimal the uh, therefore the optimal the optimal choice is to simply choose uh, is to simply choose u1 equal to 0 identically equal to 0 and u2 so once u1 is equal to 0 uh, you remember then in that case uh, x1 would be all if u1 is equal to 0 then x1 would be equal to x0 now x1 is equal to x0 and u2 can reproduce x0 which means that u2 you can take u2 to be u2 to be x0 and this here gives a cost cost equal to 0 and this is in fact the optimal cost right so when when the uh, when the full when full noise observation is available in that case uh, when full noise observation is available the the optimal uh, the you can uh, you can choose the optimal uh, you can choose the uh, uh, your controllers in such a way that the cost actually hits the global uh, the unconstrained minimum and then in fact uh, whose value is zero so that therefore this becomes the optimal choice so this is your optimal control now let's look at another variant so variant 2 let's look at another variant in which we have we give which we say is a classical information pattern now this is something we had seen earlier but i want to see this we want to emphasize something about this again so in this case now uh, u1 is is a function of x0 and u2 remember is a function of x0 and y1 and what is y1 y1 is x1 plus v right this is the information that is available to us so let's say uh, we can simply another way to write this is that this you can write this as u1 equal to this of y0 and this is a function of y0 comma y1 right okay now let's uh, now let's come back here okay so let's write this out in the following way so you can write u2 which is a function of y0 comma y1 now y0 itself is x0 so this is a function of x0 comma y1 and what is y1 remember y1 itself is x0 plus u1 plus v this is uh, this is y1 now but but if i told you that u1 is being chosen as a function of y0 okay but since u1 is a function of y0 which is itself equal to sigma of x0 we from there we can conclude that u2 belongs to sigma of x0 comma and now that see so so therefore this can be concluded as as being a function of x0 and from x0 you can compute u1 and therefore you can from x0 and uh, and x0 plus uh, uh, u1 plus v we can compute v so this therefore then becomes a function of v so we get back 
what we were getting earlier. So, so the, the there is a slight distinction between uh, between these two uh, between these uh, these two cases. So here we already had we were already being given x the information of x zero and v while compute to while choosing u two. Whereas out here we we deduce that u2 could be chosen as a function of just x0 and v assuming that u1 is chosen as a function of x0 right so in so in the classical information pattern what you really have is that you have the knowing that the earlier controller as, is being chosen in a certain way you can effectively choose your controllers as a function of the noise so you effectively have the access to this to this noise it, that is different from being given the noise observation in the first place right so that's what you uh, uh, that's what happens in the classical information pattern so using we are, we are used we have used this particular fact to conclude that u2 belongs to sigma of x0 comma v but in any case once u2 belongs to sigma of x0 comma v the previous controllers are optimal we can we can conclude that previous controllers which implies that the previous controller is optimal. Now in either of these cases notice that since u2 is a function of uh, of uh, of the of the noise here x0 and v and out here also u2 has become a function of the noise u in both cases u2 is uh, the uh, the information of u2 we have here that the information of u2 is independent of the policy gamma 1. So, it does not depend on the policy anymore. So, the information of the second controller does not depend on the policy and this that holds here too. So, here also information is independent of information of u2 is independent of the policy. Here in fact, you have been given this here we have been given this from the very beginning in this in whereas in the second case because of the information uh, pattern that because u u1 is chosen as a function of y0 and y0 is equal to x0 this becomes independent of uh, of uh, independent of the policy gamma 1 right so in both of these cases no dual effect is present So, we say that there is a dual effect that there is a dual effect if u2 belongs if the information of u2 depends on the policy gamma 1. But in both of these cases we have seen that there is no dual effect right. Let us now look at a third variant. So, let us look at a third variant here variant 3. This variant we can call this variant as a past control observation. So, what you have is access to the past control actions, so past control observations. This is the variant. Okay. So, here in this case now u0 is a function of y, u1 is a function of y0 here, which is itself remember x0. Uh, u2 here is a function now 
has uh, it is a function of y1 which is what it knew earlier uh, in the Wittgenhausen problem as well, but it also knows u1. So, it also has access to the pass control action all right. So, now let us let us go a little deeper into this. So, u1 uh, u, u2 is a function of y1 and uh, y1 and u1. So, sigma y1 comma u1 this is itself equal to now what is y1? y1 is x0 plus u1 plus v remember y1 is just x1 plus v x1 is x0 plus u1 and we are also given u1. Now, this here so notice what is happening here. So, I have been given u1 and I have been given x0 plus u1 plus v. Now, from this what I can do is I can eliminate uh, I can use the knowledge of u1 and from there infer the value of x0 plus v, but I cannot still determine x0 and v separately right. So, I will so this will become at the best it will become u1 comma x0 plus sigma of x0 u1 comma x0 plus v. This is what I can determine from here. Now, the claim is I can uh, the claim is there is a dual effect. So, I claim that there is in this problem. So, how does one claim that uh, uh, there is a dual effect? What one wants to uh, which what we need to show is that the choice of gamma 1 affects the available information or choices available choices or, or in particular the information of u2 all right so let's see how this uh, how this this actually matters okay so uh, let's uh, the uh, the le the let let us uh, let's uh, look at this more closely so suppose suppose okay so suppose so to so suppose uh, to in order to do this all i have to show is that there are, i can is that there are i can try i i have to pick up two policies uh, gamma 1 uh, val two values for gamma 1 and show that the information that the second controller has in uh, under those two policies is different so, in order to do this let us let us suppose let us take two different policies. So, suppose we take gamma 1 uh, is is 1 to 1 ok. So, suppose it is an invertible 1 to 1 and invertible right. So, if it is invertible then remember you are choosing u 1 equal to this gamma 1 of x 0. So, if 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 gamma 1 is invertible then u1 equal to gamma 1 of x0 implies so knowing u1 you can knowing u1 we can we can find find x0 right so therefore in this case sigma of u1 comma x0 plus v this becomes sigma of x0 comma x0 plus v and therefore it becomes equal to sigma of x0 comma v right. So, if I choose so remember here you are choosing uh, gamma 1 still as a function of x0 like we are, uh, like we did earlier but we are choosing it to be a different type of uh, we, we are going to choose different functions but they are all going to be functions of x0 so in the first case we chose a one to one function one to one an invertible function and in that case what we find is 
well the information of the second controller is now going to be just just x0 is going to be x0 and v. So, in other words the, uh, the second controller is able to know, uh, know the noise in the system when gamma 1 is invertible. But now let us take the other extreme suppose uh, instead of being invertible the other extreme is suppose gamma 1 is, is a constant. So, in that case u 1 equal to again gamma 1 of x 0 equal to some constant c. Right. So, now if it is a if, if it is some constant then my information u 1 comma uh, u 1 comma x 0 plus v is the knowing u 1 actually gives me no information it just gives me uh, it is just a constant. So, it, therefore, this is going to be equal to sigma of x 0 plus v. So, notice that in, in the first case here when gamma 1 was an invertible function, function of x 0 but an invertible function then this you could you could know the information about the noise separately you would know what x 0 is you would know what v is. But if gamma 1 is a constant function then you know x 0 plus v right. So, as a result of this this you can see there is a difference here between what information view the second controller has and that, that uh, the, the information that the second controller has changes with the choice of the first controller right. So, this in general is not equal to sigma of x 0 comma v. So, knowing x 0 plus v does not di directly give you does not in general give you x 0 comma v. So, so the information and the available choices of the second controller depends on the kind of function you uh, depends on the choi uh, choice of the function or policy you have used at the first stage right. So, as a result there is a dual effect in this problem. So, that is what we wanted to show that there is actually a dual effect in this problem. So, uh, an interesting angle here is also that there is in fact not only a dual effect it turns out here there is in fact no optimal solution to this problem. So, in fact so here is one other thing I want to claim that there is no optimal solution So, if you wanted to show that there is no optimal solution here is what uh, here is one uh, base one argument you can make. So, so suppose um, epsilon is some co uh, constant greater than 0 and what we will uh, do is we will construct we will construct gamma 1 gamma 2 to get cost less than equal to less than equal to epsilon. So, the simple way to do that is to simply take u 1 is as epsilon times y 0 and that is simply equal to epsilon times x 0 and to take u 2 as since we know since we know the pass control action since we know u 1 here remember we are doing the pass control action case. So, we know u 1. So, this u 1 is known here. So, you can just simply take uh, u 2 to be u 1 divided by epsilon and u 1 remember is ep x ep uh, epsilon times x x 0. So, this will therefore, becomes uh, become x 0 itself right. So, let us evaluate what the cost then uh, cost then becomes well this you, you can see you your cost is the cost is u k square u 1 square plus uh, x 0. plus uh, x0 uh, plus u uh, plus u1 minus u2 the whole square and this you can see evaluates to something like k square epsilon square x0 x0 square plus what is the second term well it will it will become uh, the second term here is u 2 u 2 is substituted as, as u 1 by epsilon x uh, um, u 2 itself is u 1 by epsilon which is x 0. 
So, what you are left with is again just uh, eventually just x u 1 here. So, that u 1 square so that will be again epsilon square x 0 square and so in short it is equal to epsilon square into k square plus 1 times. So, the expected cost would therefore be the expectation of this would therefore would therefore be equal to the expect uh, would therefore be this times the expectation of x 0 square which is. So, in other words it is some constant times epsilon square right and so we can choose your make uh, we can take take epsilon do, uh, going down to 0 and and get as low a cost as we want. as we wish. So, in other words the optimal cost optimal cost is equal to 0. Now, the optimal cost here is 0 right, but, but there is no policy it turns out that gives, but there is no policy, no policy that achieves cost equal to 0. So, we can never actually get cost equal to 0 right. So, so if you so why is this the case? So, this is because to get to get cost 0 we need we need u u 1 to be 0 you need u it has to be that u 1 is equal to 0 and we also need you also need u u 2 to be equal to x 1 right which is and x 1 is equal to x 0 plus u 0. Now, but u z uh, uh, x 1 is equal to x 0 plus u 1, but u 1 is equal to 0 which means this is therefore equal to x 0 right. So, you get u 1 which is so what we need is basically we need u 1 equal to gamma 1 of x 0 to be identically equal to 0 and u 1 which is a function of uh, and, and u 2 which is a function of of now u 1 and x, x 0 plus plus v we want this to be equal to x 0 this is what we need. But then this would but remember u 0 is a constant but uh, therefore the we as we have seen uh, sorry u 1 is a constant. So, therefore, u 2 is a, therefore a function of just x 0 plus v, but we want this x this function of x 0 plus v to be equal to x 0. So, which means from uh, what we need is from the from x 0 plus v we should be able to uh, somehow figure out x 0 itself. This is a contradiction this is not possible. So, one of we have seen this before that when u 1 is taken as a constant function u 2 only has access to x 0 plus v and from there he cannot reproduce uh, x 0. So, this is a contradiction. So, in other words there is no policy there is no policy that achieves cost equal to 0 right. So, what this means is for this particular variant there is an optimal value to the control problem, but there is no optimal policy right. So, this is one more of the kind of subtleties that happens once you have non classical information patterns uh, the that there is a there is a you can have problems for which there is an optimal cost, but there is no optimal solution. We will see more of uh, uh, more about uh, about about non classical information patterns now in the in the following lectures. <laughs>